Hello my fellow rockers and artists. Today I'm going to show you how I painted this adorable little teddy bear rock. So stay tuned. So I started out with painting this rock uh, black like I normally do. And then I'm just going to sketch out my little design of the teddy bear. And I hope you'll give this rock a try. It's so cute. I just fell in love with him or her. I guess it's a her. She's carrying a little pink blanket, so it's got to be a little her, right? So <laughs> she's, but she's really cute. And so really, these are just, I'm breaking her down into shapes. And there's just a lot of circles, right? So pretty easy to kind of sketch out. But I will have the traceable for y'all for the, those that just want to use the traceable, which is fine. Actually, tracing images is a really good way to learn how to draw. So I, I don't consider it cheating. And a lot of people in the art industry do not consider tracing cheating. There are some pretentious people that do. and uh, But I will tell you that the original uh the old school artists you know uh all of a sudden i'm drawing a blank da vinci and those guys uh picasso they all traced their images so if they can do it then we can do it right so and tracing drawing is totally different than painting so I am going to go in and paint everything white. I sketched out the design for y'all, but I am going to go ahead and cover up a lot of it with the white paint. But I always like for y'all to know exactly what design is that I'm going with. And I, I was using my kind of my small liner brush going with a kind of a wider brush. A wider brush is going to leave less brush strokes where the liner brush would have left a lot of little brush strokes. I will tell you that if you sell your rocks, brush strokes are a good thing. I think people that buy original art want to see the brush strokes. And sometimes he looks white and sometimes he looks blue. I did do it in a baby blue. So now I'm going around the ears. And you notice, like, I didn't do fur around the body and the feet. But around the ears, I'm indicating the fur. I do go around and do the fur everywhere else where I've blocked it in. But since the ears are so small, instead of just blocking them in, I'm going to go ahead and do the fur. And it's basically just a bunch of little lines. Little fine lines that make up. And you don't have to do the inside of the body. You just have to kind of do the outside where it meets the black to indicate that he's got, you know, this shaggy fur. Now, on his face, I am going to pull some more towards the center of his head or her head I guess I do it on the whole body actually I kind of out you'll see how I do it uh, to indicate fur on the interior part of it part of his body her body I guess I'm just going to keep calling it a he. Of course, if, if it's a he and he wants to carry a pink blanket, there's nothing wrong with that, right? 
No judgment here. Now this is a um, a mold that I got off of Amazon. It's a two pack mold. There's um, some. It came with these small two and a half inch, I believe, round molds and bigger oval molds that you might have seen. I think I did make uh, a cartoon rattlesnake on one that's the oval mold. But if you want to know the link to that, uh, I don't, I'm not sure how the Patreon videos work. It, like, can you see the description? I'll go ahead and put it in the description just in case. I'm not real sure how, how these videos link in Patreon. Um, hopefully that because they do link to YouTube, you might still be able to see the description um, I guess I'm not, I don't really know. So I'll go ahead and put it in the description. If it doesn't show up, if you can't see that, just message me or leave a comment and I will get you the link to these actual molds that I, cause I bought mine off of Amazon. So I'm going in and, and putting in his little blanket, which is kind of, kind of like a, a very a fuzzy blanket, like a terry cloth blanket. Did I make blankets out of terry cloth? I thought there would be a towel. Maybe like a fleece blanket. It's a fuzzy blanket because I do add some texture to it to make it look fuzzy. Now I'm shading in the the shadows the shadowed areas and highlighting this top section. I want there to be a little fold here. And see, I'm doing a lot of like uh, stippling and that's what's adding the texture to the bear and the, the blanket. It's kind of a, a stippling motion that I'm using. Because I don't want it to look smooth. I want it to have some texture to it. Now, I originally painted the background black and I painted the bear on it. And then I thought, get, get down from there. Oh my gosh, sorry. My cat, <laughs> we have snakes and one of my snakes is out and climbing around and my cat just got on top of the cage. So she's distracting me. Um, these these snakes are big enough that they could actually kill her but uh she's we try to let her spend time with them to try to i, I don't know uh to deter her curiosity i also have a parrot that lives here too and she pays no attention to the parrot because she's been allowed to investigate her and the parrot has bit her twice, and so she pays no attention to Harley. And I know in some of my videos, you've probably heard Harley in the background. Uh, so Harley is has made it very clear to her that she is not to be messed with. And so, but the snakes, uh, they obviously can't get to the cat. So the cat is, and the cat's name is Callie. She's a calico. She's beautiful. She's really, she's an awesome cat. Uh, 
but we try to we we try to allow her to be curious and let her investigate the snakes, but because they cannot let her know, like we can't let them strike at her or anything. Like we would never let them do that. But I feel like because they move around and, and they've never taught her that they're not to be messed with, she hasn't lost her curiosity to them like she has with the bird. And the the bird was all pure purely by accident. I always thought that she would hurt hurt the bird. Um and then she stuck her paw in there one day before I could get to her and Harley nipped her. And Harley doesn't ever bite hard. She just nips and lets you know that you're you know in her space so uh the cat was never never harmed but i'm hoping that over time she'll lose interest in the snakes but so far it hasn't happened anyway she's the latest addition to our family so she's very curious about everything going on anyway so here i am putting in the fur texture to the head of the teddy bear and you see i'm doing this in lines there it's it's subtle though um there's not a lot of contrast between the background color and the fur so now i'm drawing in the little nose which originally I did in blue. I do go back in later and do it in black. And you can see I'm still doing that stippling motion in the areas that I want highlighted. And that adds that texture. And then I do just a little line down the middle of the face to kind of indicate a seam. And just some little tiny eyes. Remember, if you put the eyes down close, if you kind of group the eyes, the nose, and the mouth together tightly and do a big head, that always makes the character look cuter. And you do the eyebrows real high up. That It helps too. I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm probably, oh, I'm switching paintbrushes. And this is a better, this paintbrush is better for glazing. So now I'm kind of glazing the face just a little bit darker with a little bit of blue. And then highlighting the top of the nose. And then just adding in some more shadows. Now I w am going to take in my Createx Black. But I'm not going to trap this design. I'm just going to uh, indicate some really dark areas. And you know I always talk about it. You want your darks dark and your lights light. It's easy to get lights, right? Because you just do white. But a lot of people are intimidated by going really dark. And... That's where you have to kind of just be brave and kind of just go for it. If you don't like it, we're dealing with acrylics. It's really easy to just wait a couple of minutes or blow dry it and go back and lighten everything up if you don't like it. That's the one thing that's really great about acrylics. Uh, and, and every, well, I'm not going to say every medium, uh, gouache, acrylics, and oil you can paint over it or oils you can just wipe it off if you don't like it but um 
these mediums allow you to experiment. And so I say go for it. Just, and believe me, I've been there. I've been scared. And I've sat in front of my easel and and looked at a painting I really wanted to do and didn't know where to start, was afraid I'd screw it up. You know, I've been there. I've, I've gone through all of those emotions. Um, but over the years, I've learned that these mediums are so forgiving that it allows you to kind of experiment. And if you don't like it, paint over it. You know, you'll never, with acrylics, you're never going to hit a point where you cannot fix it. You know, where if you were dealing in, uh, let's say, colored pencil, that you can't screw up. You know, that, that you can't fix. If you screw it up, you screwed it up. So I say go for it, experiment, figure out what you like, figure out your technique, and just enjoy the process. So now I've moved my rock onto a Lazy Susan or a turntable. And I anchor my hand down and then I just spin the table to create a straight line. The only thing you have to watch out for is the amount of pressure that you push. Especially if you don't get your rock in the center, of, which is hard. To get it right smack in the center of your turntable. So it takes a little bit of, you know, kind of finessing back and forth. But I did a ring around the top. And then I'm going to do kind of a plaid design down the side. And then another ring at the base. And this is kind of new for me. I normally just paint a black background and just leave it. I've been trying to kind of come up with some other kind of background designs. Now I have some pencil marks on here. You just have to ignore those. I end up erasing those. I actually erased them tonight, which I painted this rock, I don't know, a week ago. So I'm just doing some stripes and the thing about this is they don't have to be perfect the you don't want them perfect see how my stripes aren't all even and everything and part of the charm of it is the imperfection it lets the the receiver whether they are gifted or you hide them or you sell them but it's it's handmade, so there's supposed to be imperfections. There's supposed to be brush strokes. There's supposed to be texture. That's what lends to the charm of it being handmade. So don't be afraid of imperfections. So now I'm just, and every set of stripes it's going to be a little different color and I reverse the direction to kind of give that plaid feel to it see here you can see that my stripes aren't the same width and there's some areas where I screwed up on this, this is the first time I've ever done kind of plaid and but I just rolled with it I it I didn't really care Perfection is not what I was striving for. And when you, <laughs> when you relieve yourself of that kind of constraint that it's got to be perfect, it becomes a lot less stressful. And as and when I when I kind of hit that point 
where I started to become okay with imperfection in in the design. You know, uh, I strive for, for perfection in certain areas, but like in this case, imperfection was fine. It became more enjoyable for me. And I think my art improved a lot because I wasn't so scared and I started to experiment and really enjoy the process. So you can see there my my stripes go thin to fat to thin. They're, the spacing's not all, all perfect. And that, that's what I wanted. I'm kind of just putting a second coat on this type top stripe. Now I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to do the bottom stripe. Now the bottom is a lot harder because of the way the mold formed. This isn't per perfectly round. Where the top is, the bottom isn't. But I love how this rock turned out. Which is why I saved it for you guys. When I have a rock that I really like, I save it for y'all. So I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. This was a lot of fun for me to make. And will it will be available on my Etsy page if you're interested in it. Um, these This style of rock makes a great gift and it makes a great paperweight that's what I call them paperweight rocks my flat bigger rocks they come with a stand so they're more of like an artwork but this is more like a paperweight they're more functional so I hope you enjoyed this rock I just want to say a personal thank you to each and every one of you for your support it means the world to me and I will see you in the next video. I hope you enjoyed this one. I hope you'll give it a shot. This one's a really cute one. And if you do, please post it on my Facebook group, Rockin' it with, Rockin with April May. I would love to see your designs. So I will see y'all in the next video.